Our Earth experiences one or two solar flares daily, the energy of which is equivalent to millions of volcanic eruptions. However, because of the magnetic field surrounding Earth, this energy does no harm. But recently, according to NASA, the strongest solar flare to date is set to hit Earth in 2025. And do you know what will happen when it hits Earth? Well, according to NASA, it will mark the beginning of a catastrophic scene. Everywhere, there will be nothing but flames, and Earth will once again turn into a blazing sphere of fire. This solar flare will be so powerful that the energy released by it will be equivalent to billions of nuclear bombs exploding at once. And at that time, the magnetic field will not be able to protect us. So that means, soon, the sun is going to destroy Earth. But friends, on a lighter note, about 163 years ago, a similar explosion already occurred on Earth. The year was 1859. At 11.11 in the morning, British astronomer Richard Carrington was observing different activities on the sun. During this observation, suddenly, such an intense light flash occurred in his telescope that he couldn't see anything for five minutes. He thought maybe a comet had flown by, so he ignored the flash and didn't pay much attention to it. But this mistake of his put the whole world at risk. The light captured in his telescope was not an ordinary light, but a plasma bomb. A strong solar flare traveling at millions of kilometers per second, already heading toward Earth. The very next day, on September 2nd, 1859, when this flare hit Earth's magnetic field, the skies lit up with beautiful auroras everywhere, as if the entire sky was painted in different colors. But these beautiful auroras were like the calm before the storm. Their brightness was so intense that it appeared to be daytime even at night. In fact, gold miners in America mistook that night for day and began mining. Gradually, as the charged particles from the solar flare entered Earth's upper atmosphere, electrical appliances, street light poles, electric transformers, and towers started catching fire. All companies and telegraph systems stopped working. Due to the high voltage current flowing through electrical devices, people started experiencing severe shocks, resulting in the deaths of thousands. The damage caused by that solar flare was just a trailer. The storm back then wasn't that strong, and the technology of that time wasn't as advanced. In fact, in the 1800s, electricity had just been invented. But if we talk about the present, the world runs on electricity. 87% of everything around us, from small gadgets to massive machines, operates on electricity. As I mentioned earlier, the upcoming solar flare in 2025 will be 100 times bigger. If calculated in terms of energy, its impact will be a thousand times more significant. It's a grave concern. The technologies we rely on for survival might potentially become the reason for our demise. NASA has launched the Advanced Composition Explorer, ACE, satellite, to study solar flares and radiation from the sun. But as soon as the satellite detects a solar flare and transmits the information to us, we will have only 30 minutes to save Earth, which is next to impossible given the speed of the solar flare. According to calculations, this solar flare is expected to hit Earth at a minimum speed of 48 crore 28 lakh kilometers per second. The normal speed of solar flares is already very high. To understand how this is happening, we need to understand the reactions and movements occurring in the sun's core. Look at this. This is the sun's core, where continuous nuclear fusion reactions occur leading to the constant movement of charged particles. The flow of charged particles means electric current, and the presence of electric current equals a magnetic field. Simple physics. Initially, the sun's magnetic field lines travel from north to south, but due to the sun's intense gravity, these magnetic lines stretch and tangle, creating knots. These knots trap matter 
and create black patches, scientifically known as sunspots. These sunspots look something like this and can be captured using basic telescopes. Normally, this trapped matter cools down and condenses, converting into plasma clouds, which fall onto the sun's surface as plasma rain. However, due to certain disturbances, some parts of the plasma separate from the sun's magnetic field. When this happens, the sunspot ejects a magnetized plasma cloud into the solar system at the speed of light, like a bullet fired from a gun. This phenomenon occurs every 11 years when the sun's magnetic field reorganizes itself and changes its polarity. This means every 11 years, these solar flares are ejected into the solar system. Since Earth is the only habitable planet in the solar system, it experiences the most impact. The last time these flares hit Earth was in 2014, and now, 11 years later, they are set to hit again in 2025. If this solar flare collides with Earth, it could lead to serious damage, possibly even mass extinction. As the flare approaches Earth, it will first encounter the magnetic field. The charged particles in the storm will collide with satellites orbiting Earth, damaging them and causing them to fall toward Earth, leading to a satellite rain. A small piece of a satellite falling to Earth can release enough energy to destroy Maharashtra, Gujarat, and Rajasthan simultaneously. Now imagine the impact of 5,500 satellites and millions of debris pieces orbiting Earth. It could literally turn into a meteor shower, causing unimaginable destruction. Even if we somehow avoid or survive this, the high voltage current formed in the geomagnetic storm will burn all electrical appliances, from small gadgets to large systems. If transmission towers fail, it's obvious that electricity outages will occur. The first impact of this outage will be on public transportation and elevators. Transportation will come to a complete halt. Every day, 325 million people travel, and all transportation will cease. Emergency services will be heavily impacted. Hospitals will have no electricity, and those on ventilators or other life support systems will not survive. When the Northern Grid, the highest voltage electricity transmission network, failed for 13 to 14 hours, it caused the immediate death of 12.2% of hospital patients. The 2025 outage could last over a month. This will cause the biggest loss to the global GDP, as every aspect of life relies on electricity. The top five countries alone have a combined GDP of 48 trillion. Now imagine the global loss. But let me remind you, we will only face this loss if we survive. Simultaneously, the radiation from the sun will affect Earth's living organisms. This radiation could cause skin cancer and weaken the immune system, making the human body more vulnerable to bacteria and viruses. This could lead to a catastrophic event. But wait a minute, will this really happen? In history, similar events, equally strong, have revealed many mysteries of Earth instead of causing destruction. For instance, the solar flare explosion in 774 AD significantly increased the amount of carbon-14 in the atmosphere. Actually, cosmic rays separate neutrons in storms present in Earth's atmosphere. These neutrons combine with nitrogen atoms to form carbon-14, which then combines with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. Plants absorb this carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. Scientists suggest that if carbon-14 hadn't increased, plants, microorganisms, humans, animals and sea creatures would never have evolved. So, we can say that solar flares have been instrumental in Earth's evolution. Friends, it's clear that solar flares can be both a boon and a bane. No matter how much we may dislike them, the truth is that they are the reason we exist today. So, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think scientists will find a way to protect us from this solar flare? 
or will it lead to massive destruction? Write your thoughts in the comment section. And if you learned something new from this video, don't forget to like it. As always, stay curious, keep learning, and keep growing.